Hi, I'm Tom Hearing, Gilson Engineering Sales, and I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to show you how easy it is to configure a Siemens mass flow transmitter. As you can see, there are six buttons that are used for configuring the uh, mass flow, mass 6000 flow transmitter. This first button here, we just call it the up top key. This scrolls right, scrolls left. This selects. This you can get into the menu. This lock and unlock looks like a little lock there. Basically, that's kind of more or less your enter key. When you're getting into the uh, selecting, you choose what you want, and then you lock it in, so to speak, when you're configuring it. To get into the, the uh, menu, you hold this down for two seconds, and up pops this password requirement. Default password on this item is 1000. You saw I pushed this button twice, moved the cursor underneath there. If I wanted to, I could keep changing those numbers until I got to the correct ones. You can set your own password if you like, but as I said, default is 1000. So I hit the unlock key. We are now in the setup mode. We're in the programming mode for that. See, the first thing that comes up is basic settings. So we want to play with basic settings. We hit the unlock key. This is where we start selecting our basic setup for the device. Flow direction, which way is positive, which way is negative. You can also have your maximum mass flow. We have our setup for 10,000 pounds per hour. Then you also have your volume flow max. We currently have it for 20 US gallons per minute. And density, if I were to unlock here, we could be changing our density dependent upon, if you know up front what your density is and the device of whatever you're going to be measuring, you can enter it here. It does measure that density as well, though. So it may tweak that a little bit once you start flowing, but you can give, a, give it a basic number so you get an understandable value when you're looking through that. And always this upper left key, it backs you out of the menu. So now I'm back up to density. As you can see, I could all, go all the way back up to basic settings if I wanted. But we'll go back into that again. Volume flow, density, sensor temp. That's when we're going to set up what our uh, max flow temperature is going to be on there. We can unlock it. We can change things, put it back in again. You can see where it goes back to lock again. And then lastly, fraction, totalizer. That's when we can go in and set up what we want for our totalizer values. Go down to volume flow. We can change that if we want to mass flow for or fraction or fraction B, but we want to have volume flow as our totalizer. So we're going to select that, lock it in, and we're ready to go for that. Same thing for totalizer two, you can set it up as well. And we'll back out of there then. Now we have a low flow cutoff as well. Generally, you get down to a low enough flow, you're not going to get a good value anyway. So usually you're going to set up a percentage of your span as your low flow. Usually I set it up for about 5%. That seems to work pretty well for the majority of the uh, measurement that I uh, have used this for. So we'll back out of there. Now once you get done with your basic settings, now you set up your output. That's the next thing over for output, unlock. Now you set up, you got current output one. For instance, we're saying our current output is set up for mass flow. If we wanted to change that, we'd unlock it. Use the select button. We can change it over to fraction. We can go to volume flow. We can even output sensor temperature as our 4 to 20 milliamp for our first analog output, but, or density as well. But we're going to set it up for mass flow because that's the way we like to have the device set up for that. Back it out of there. Then you got your digital output, how you want to set that up. Frequency is generally what you're going to have it set up for error level, error number. Basically, you can get a direction limit. You can have it set up so that you're going to get a digital pulse when you have one of these errors come up. You can be monitoring it downstream of the device and utilize that as more of an error checking type uh, application. So we'll back out of here. And relay outputs as well. You can have this thing set up so you can turn things off and on. So you set up your set point here for what you'd have your relay. It's currently set off. We're not using it right now. However, if you wanted to, you could unlock it, change it to error level. You're going to hit a, a certain error level. Then you know you're going to engage that relay. Error numbers, be a certain number of errors. You're going to, you can hit that relay as well. If your direction changes or if you have a limit on that, you can change that as well. But in our case, we want to just keep it off. So we'll lock that in and we're done there.
And we've already set up our current outputs. There are others that we can have dual currents. This particular transmitter is only set up with a single out current output. So now we went with outputs. Next thing is it external input you can set up. And that's just basically a way of, let's show you here. We could unlock it where you want to start batching. You can actually use this thing as a batching device. So externally, you're going to say, hey, it's time to start measuring now because we started our batch. That's what we're going to utilize when we do something like that. Hold, continue, you can always be doing, as you're controlling with this device for certain types of flow, you can ramp up, you can stop, you can slow down again, you can continue on. So there's multiple ways that you can use this to control what you're uh, process is doing, and then also the stop batch. Zero adjust, total, totalizer reset also. You can reset, use from an external output coming in and automatically reset your totalizer, or you can do it from the screen itself. Now, we'll get, then we can scroll on over. Sensor characteristics, don't touch that button. Leave it alone. It's already set up internally for what this sensor does, so don't even worry about that. Then the reset mode, this is when, as opposed to using an external input, what you utilize is you can just go right into reset mode, and you can reset totalizer one, or you can reset totalizer two, and that's how you can do it right here at the screen, as opposed to doing it with an external input then. So we'll back out of there. The last mode I want to talk about is called the service mode. And that can be very useful once you've set up the instrument and you want to test your outputs. You see I get to service mode, unlock, and now it tells me what my mass flow is, what our low flow cutoff is. But here's the, the best part is the current output, number one. What you do is you unlock here, it says normal. Now if I change that, I unlock, change it, I can force 20 milliamps right out of here. So that way you can test your downstream, make sure everything is connected properly, you can actually see what's going on. You can also do this, it's set for normal, we'll keep it there. As well as the current output, there's a digital output. So once again, you can get into this thing, normal, you can change it, you can force that digital output. So you click things on and off. But we're gonna stay at, at normal mode here. And lastly, not only is there a digital output, but there's a relay output as well. You can do the same thing. You go into it, you unlock it from normal, you go to force it on, or you can force it off. So you can turn it on and off, and that's another good way of testing what's going on downstream of your device, make sure everything is connected properly. So as you can see, it's pretty relatively easy on uh, setting things up. You see it says exit service reinitialization. What happens whenever you go into service mode, when you come out again, it re reinitializes the entire uh, device to make sure it's all set up properly. Anything you've changed will not be, not affect the way you initially configured it. So we get out of service mode, and now I'm back to the regular volume flow. It takes a little, a little bit to get back there, but it will come back up with a uh, regular screen. And lastly, once I'm back into the regular flow mode, as you can see, it says negative five pounds per hour. We're getting just a very slight backflow going across here right now as these two tanks even out. But when you're in this mode, if you set up your password and you, only want, you don't want the operator to go in and con change configuration, he can come up here just by pressing this white button. He can see what totalizer one is reading right now. He can find out what his density reading is, sensor temperature, Zero adjust, how much it had to adjust to get automatic zero on this thing. When you zeroed up the, the thing, you could also check and see if you had any errors pending. Then you go back into service mode and check out those errors, but it's at least the operator can scroll through this device, doesn't need to know a password. He's not gonna screw anything up, but he can look at a number of bits of information to see what's going on. As you can see, it's relatively easy to set one of these devices up. If, however, you have some questions, feel free to call Gilson Engineering and talk with your local representative. Thank you.